You found it. La, 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 la. Itchy news. Pop quiz. How do you store leftover wine? Fair enough, I have no idea either. Really, what is leftover wine? You're thinking it, I'm thinking it, but I'm hearing rumors that it happens to people. Wine that they do not finish. I've got some answers for you. Stick around. Hello wine lovers, I'm Erin from the Wine Sisters and welcome to our channel where every week we show you how to eat, drink and entertain like a pro. Today I want to thank Christy. Christy, thank you so much for writing in and asking how do you store leftover wine? Well, after I picked myself up off the floor and was like, leftover wine? I was like, okay, I can help you with this. I mean, I'm gonna have to stretch my knowledge base a lot, but I can help you figure it out. Well, the truth is it's not that difficult to store leftover wine. Back in the day, wines were much more delicate than they are now, thanks to some really great R&D. Well, yeah, of course you wanna be respectful to the art that's in the bottle. They can be a little bit more sturdier than you think. So when I was working in restaurants, we had all kinds of fancy equipment. Anything from the, you know, several hundred dollars for a Coravan, which would only pour out a certain amount at a time, to these Enotecas, to uh, even, you know, a little bit of nitrogen gas, and even those vacuum pumps that you pumped into the wine that would take out the oxygen, seal it, and so you could serve it fresh for another day. But regular home wine drinkers probably don't have any of those tools. You probably just need some basics on, you know, you cracked open a bottle tonight, you had one or two glasses, you have half a bottle left, and you're gonna have it tomorrow night or the next night, or maybe even on the following weekend. And how do you make it last? Getting to the punchline, whether it is a red wine or a white wine or a rosé wine for that matter, you always wanna store them back in the refrigerator, even the reds. You don't want them sitting out on the counter on room temperature. I'm gonna to get to exactly why that is in a second. But the challenge with opening up a bottle of wine and having it left over is that you've gotten some air into that bottle. And air is both the friend and the enemy of wine, the frenemy. You pour it into a glass, give it a little swirl, it opens it up and it makes great things happen. However, you leave an open glass or an open bottle on the counter overnight, you know, things are getting a bit dicey. That oxygen exposure, that exposure to the air will denigrate the wine. It will degrade it and help it sort of oxidize it a little bit further. And that's not ideal, right? So all of those fresh flavors are going to go a little bit more sour and you don't want that. So by keeping your wines tightly sealed and in the fridge, whatever style of wine it is, that cold temperature will sort of stop the wine in its tracks, at least for a little while. It will stop or prohibit that advanced evolution of the wine. So that's gonna be pretty good. Now, all you have to do, obviously, if it's got the screw cap, you put the screw cap back on. If it's got the cork, you put the cork back in. But let's say you've got a corked bottle of wine, not a corked bottle of wine, but a wine that's been served with a cork. But that reminds me, you wanna know how you, uh, if you wanna know if your wine is corked or faulty, just head to this video right here and uh, you will be able to figure out pretty quickly some of your most common faults in the wine. But do it after this video, or just click the link. Do whatever you want, it's you. But you should watch this video, come back, side issue. Okay, but let's say you've got a wine bottle and you can't fit the cork in anymore, it's expanded. Well, there's loads of things on the market, anything from these cutesy rubbery, you know, sometimes there's a picture on it or a little sculpture on it. And these work really well, as cutesy as they are, uh, what they lack in sophistication, they work in complete utilitarian. They fit into the wine bottle and it's, perfectly sealed, it's absolutely great. So you can use that uh, and then you just put that right back in the fridge. Now, if you're looking for something that has a little bit more style maybe, you can always get one of these silver stoppers, but do make sure it has the rubber bits on it because just to have, as I'm sure you can figure out, just to have the steel against the glass means that the air can still get in. But by getting one that has a little bit of a rubber stopper on it means that you're prohibiting that air from getting in and that's what we're after. Now, let's say you don't have a little stopper at home. <laughs> this works. It's not necessarily the most sophisticated thing you'll ever do in your life, but hey, a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. You just take a little bit of saran wrap, put it right on the bottle, wrap it around. If for whatever reason you're saran wrap challenged and it won't stay, heck, break out the elastics. That's why we keep them, right? Break out the elastic, put it right on there, and keep it sealed in the refrigerator and you are good to go. Now, I did talk in last week's video about wine temperature. 
And so what you want to do, if you have got your red wine stored in the fridge until you're ready to drink it again, make sure you bring it out at least 45 minutes before serving it. Maybe even bring out the whole bottle and even pour off the first glass or two so that way we'll have time to get up to the more appropriate serving temperature. If you wanna know more about serving temperatures for wine, just click right here and we will get you all hooked up with that video too. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You've got a regular bottle, seal it up with whatever seal you prefer, saran wrap, plastic, put the cork back in, whatever, and leave it in the fridge. Generally speaking, and of course this is a very general swath, your red wines, you should be able to get three to five days out of them. Will they fade a little bit? Sure. Is the average palate gonna notice? Not particularly. Not unless you're the most delicate of snowflakes, the most delicate of master psalms, will you really notice that your wine has sort of subdued a little bit over the number of days. Your white wines, you can probably get five to seven days. And guys, if you don't end up drinking your wine within that three to five to seven day period, keep it around. You can use it to cook with, it's absolutely fine. In fact, we have a great video on how to use, what you can do for leftover champagnes and sparkling wines. You can click that right here. Jeez, just dropping the knowledge bombs today. But if you do have a bottle of sparkling wine that you want to keep around for the next day, and why wouldn't you? It's not gonna be perfect. In fact, you're probably going to have a nearly flat sparkling wine. But you can use one of these um, little champagne stoppers and they have the rubber end here. And all you have to do is press it down deep into the bottle and then clamp it along the sides and it will stay there like that. The idea is that that's going to create a little bit of more pressure in the bottle and the bubbles will stay. Honestly, that has never been my experience. So the good news is, is that drinking your sparkling wine that has gone flat, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just as delicious. It's just that the bubbles have gone. So it's absolutely perfect. But if that makes you a little bit nervous, definitely don't throw that out. Do check out that video on how to use leftover sparkling wine for some delicious options. You wanna check that out. And finally, my last tip for you, which is actually probably the best. I've saved the best for last. See if you can go to the store and get some of these half bottles. Drink what's inside, use it for cooking, dump it out for all I care, whatever. Uh, you know, rinse it out and keep these in. Now, I learned this trick from a fabulous Niagara winemaker who I'm so delighted is my friend. His name's Thomas Bashelder. So Thomas, if you're watching, this is for you and I'm giving you full cred because this is one of the most brilliant things I've ever learned. If you are having, you know, you finish a bottle of wine and you're like, you know what, let's open another, but I'm not sure I have another two or three glasses in me. I just want one more glass. Well, this is what you can do is when you open up your fresh bottle, knowing full well, you are not going to finish that bottle. You immediately pour the, the first half of the open big bottle into the empty, cleaned, smaller bottle. You seal that smaller bottle up tight and stick that in the fridge. This, by pouring it off immediately, will allow that wine to last for even longer. Now, why is that? Again, when we have a half open bottle of wine, look how big this bottle is. When we have a half open bottle of wine, there's a lot more surface area of the wine to the air that's already in the bottle. But when we're able to fill up a smaller bottle, even if it doesn't get filled up all the way, that means that there's a smaller ratio of wine, of the surface of the wine to the air, and you're going to have slower, um, a slower evolution. So it's a really neat trick. So once again, you open up your full bottle, you know you're not going to have the full thing. So you take your clean bottle that you've got in stock somewhere, you pour off the first half, seal it up, put it in the fridge, leave it for another day, and then you drink what's left in the bottle, in the big bottle. Does that make sense? I hope it does. It's one of the most brilliant tricks I've ever learned in addition to the ice swirling that I talked about in last week's video on wine temperature. So pretty cool. Anyway, guys, uh, hopefully that helped you out, Christy. Guys, if anybody else has any more questions or you wanna know anything else about wine, please leave it in the comments below and we will get around to answering them on a future episode of our wine channel. I hope that you found this really helpful. Uh, thank you, Christy, for writing in. If any of you have any more questions or you want to know something else about wine, just leave it in the comments below and we will be sure to make sure that we get to that answer in a future episode. Okay guys, my name's Erin. I'm from the Wine Sisters. Please, if you love this video, leave us a little comment letting us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up. Even share it with some of the wine lovers in your life so everybody can get the most out of their wine drinking experience. Until next week, guys, stay well, drink better. <laughs>